Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to create an awesome radial focus blur that's gonna keep your subject nice and sharp but blur and spin the edges like a dream. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com. Seven days a week, that's eight, <laughs> where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. Today we're creating an awesome special effect. We're calling it the Radial Focus Blur. So what is a radial focus blur and where can you find that command in Photoshop? Well, it doesn't exist in Photoshop. This is actually a technique that we made up here at Flurn and uh, it creates a really cool special effect. So because we made up the technique, I'm also making up the name radial focus blur. So this is the only place you'll see how to do this. It's a really, really cool effect. Let's go ahead and get into our image and I'll show you what we're gonna be doing today. Our image for today was submitted by Justin Statton and he's one of the winners from our last portrait contest. And you guys can submit your images to our contest and have your images edited here on flurn.com. So what we're gonna do, and I really like this image, it's so cool. Basically what I wanna do is, I wanna create an, like a special effect, and I was trying to figure out how to, how to basically do this, that would keep our subject here in focus, and then like towards the edges, like apply like a blur, and allow it to like, kind of like spin at the same time. Something that you might see like a, in a lens baby or something like that, but we're gonna control it here in Photoshop. So to do this effect, basically you're gonna have to be able to master the step and repeat command, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So let's go ahead and hit command J, which is just gonna duplicate our background layer. And we're gonna start with the step and repeat with our step. So first you do the step, and then you do the repeat. Okay, so to start your step, hold down Option and Command and hit T. So that's gonna start your step. Now what you wanna do is, basically you take this little reference point that's always in the center of your layer, right? You can click and move this around, okay? You're gonna move this right to your subject, usually like right between your subject size. That's where we wanna move this here, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our image just a little bit larger. So I'm gonna hold down the Shift key, okay, which is gonna scale it, and hold down the Option key. So we're gonna scale this up just a little bit. There we go, that looks great. So I'm doing it by like 100.37. Let's just go to 101. All right, 101%. And we're gonna lock the width and the height there so they each go to 101. And then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this around just a little bit. Let's go, there we go, something like that. Point, let's go 0. 0.6 degrees. So we're scaling it up and rotating it around a little bit. And then I'm gonna hit enter. So that starts our, gotta hit enter twice apparently. That starts our step. So whenever you do a step, and again, that's option command T, it's gonna start that step. Whenever you do that, it's gonna apply a transformation. And then if you hit Shift, Option, Command, T, that's what's called the repeat. So finishing the step and repeat. And what it's gonna do is it's basically gonna do the same thing over and over and over again. So now all I have to do is hit Shift, Option, Command, and hit T. There we go. And each time I hit T, what it's basically gonna do, and you can see it here, is the same effect over and over and over again. So it's making the image a little bit larger and kind of twisting it over and over and over again. So that is basically the effect. If I make these layers invisible, you can see the layers, there we go. They kind of get smaller and smaller and rotate back the other way. So now to actually be able to like see the effect because the final image you can see, there's no blur or anything like that going on, right? The final image, what we need to do is we need to take all those layers. So I'm gonna just shift click all of those, all of those layers and then I need to change the opacity of all the layers so you can see through them a little bit, okay? And what this is gonna allow you to do is like the edges, you're gonna be able to see that blur, but it's gonna stay, this focus is going to stay right on our subject. So if you shift click a bunch of layers, you can hit V, that brings up your move to tool, and that'll allow you to actually change the opacity of a bunch of layers at the same time. So I'm gonna hit the number three, and that's gonna change my opacity to 30%. If I hit the number four, my opacity is gonna be 40%. The number seven, my opacity is gonna be seven the number one, it'll be 10. So this will be, you can kind of choose your effect here based on how much, like the number you choose, like seven or eight, 80%, you're not gonna see so much of an effect, you know, 40% or 50%, you're gonna see a little bit more of this effect. And basically what you're doing is you're keeping the face in the same place as you rotate and spin the rest of the image. So the effect increases 
as you get closer to your edges, which is really cool. Let's just bring down the opacity that's just, there we go. We're gonna do about 50%. I'm gonna hit Command G and group those together so you guys can see. Our face is still in focus because that stayed in the same place as we like scaled this and moved it around. But here towards the edges, check that out. We have this like really, really cool blurred effect. And it actually like, it, you can see like several different versions of the image. So it's almost like you like took a bunch of different photographs and stacked them together again, which is exactly what we did. All right, now the cool part about this guys is depending on how much like of a zoom and things like that you do, it's gonna change the effect. So I'm gonna do it one more time just so you can see that I'm gonna change the settings a little bit here and it's going to, it's just gonna look a little bit different, okay? So we'll hit Command J to duplicate that background again. Option Command T and this time let's just do a slight turn. We're gonna do even less and I'm gonna size this up a little bit less as well, okay? So there we go. I just didn't do, I turned it a little bit less and I scaled it a little bit less. So Shift Option Command T, we're gonna click this a few times. There we go. And now I'm gonna shift click all of those layers and I'm gonna hit V and then the number three. So you can see, because I did a slightly less of an effect each time, like I moved it a tiny bit less, then it doesn't look as, zooming in here, it doesn't look, you don't see the steps as much. See, this time you see the steps a little bit more, this time you see the steps a little bit less and it looks a little bit more like that blur. Oh, you know what I did? I forgot to move my center focal point. So make sure you put your center, center focal point right there on your subject and that's going to make sure that your subject's face stays not blurry. And if you wanna enhance that a little bit more, here's what I would suggest doing. Create a new layer and then a stamp visible by hitting Shift Option Command E we're gonna change this layer blend mode from overlay and I'm gonna to go to filter, other, and here to high pass. And then we're gonna just choose a nice radius that gives us some nice sharpening right there on our subject's face. There we go, something like that. And then I'm gonna put a black layer mask on there and then we're gonna paint white on our layer mask just over top of our subject's face, which is gonna bring in some sharpening again and it's gonna really help to draw attention to your subject. So. Really, really cool effect. Let's go ahead and full screen this so you guys can see the before and the after. Again, there's the before and the after with that awesome radial blur and it really does draw attention right to your subject. It just gives the image like a, a, a cool special effect that you really can't get by doing this, uh, by doing anything else. And that's the end of today's episode. I would love to see this effect. If you guys do apply this on one of your images, please leave it in a comment right down below. Just leave, leave us a link and we'll follow that link and check out your images. And if you guys have any other ideas for episodes, if you're like, oh, I wanna learn how to remove someone's chest hair in Photoshop, leave us a comment down below. That's how we get the ideas for our episodes. We take your suggestions and we turn them into Photoshop episodes. Subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can receive this and many other free Photoshop and photography videos and share this with all your friends interested in Photoshop or photography or people with beards. <laughs> Thanks again, guys, and we'll flirt you later. By the way, did you notice our new Flurn decals on our MacBook Pro with the light of the Apple symbol shining through the Flurn speech bubble? So cool. Very um, unique and pretty and fun.